Good morning, and welcome to Worship at Three Willows United Church. My name is Jack Finley. I am a member of the core group, or governing body, for Three Willows. This morning, we welcome Andrew Hyde as our guest minister. Andrew is the chaplain for the Ecumenical Campus Ministries at the University of Guelph, and is a designated lay minister in the United Church of Canada. Thank you, Andrew, for presiding over selected Sunday services in the next few months. We look forward to your ministry here at Three Willows. Friends, welcome to this special time of worship with Three Willows United Church. My name is Andrew Hyde. I serve as the Ecumenical Campus Minister at the University of Guelph. I use he, him pronouns, and it is a real honor to be leading us in our worship time today. I'm leading us from uh, my home here in Guelph, just off campus, uh, on the traditional territory of the Attawandaran people, the, the treaty lands of the uh, Mississaugas of the Credit. And trust that wherever you are, you are feeling rooted and present uh, and able to open yourself to worship today. It is All Saints Day today. And so part of our worship uh, reflects back upon those saints and faithful witnesses who have walked this journey uh, before us. So like them, like many of them, I'm going to begin our worship today by lighting our Christ candle. Uh, the Christ candle is one of the ways that we signify the presence of the divine with us as we worship. And we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The Christ candle is lit. By its light, may we see truth and may we know love. Friends, would you join me in prayer? Let us pray. O loving God, we, your saints, gather to worship and praise you this day. We celebrate the saints who have served you and been an example for us throughout the past. We give you thanks for the joy of being a part of the communion of saints with those who have gone before and those who are scattered around the globe. Open us up to your Holy Spirit so we may be the saints you have called us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the multitude from every nation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing, and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might, be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Friends, would you pray with me? Uh, gracious God, bless the words from my lips and the meditations of our hearts that they might serve you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation is that uh, mysterious vision given to St. John um, whereby he envisions what heavenly worship looks like and the, the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. We get this image of a grand multitude of diverse people clothed in white gathered around the throne of God, singing praise and, and uh, giving their, their adoration to the risen Christ. I'm struck by a couple of things in our reading today. First off, I'm struck by the diversity of that crew. And you think of that multitude expressing many different cultures and languages from all corners of the globe where uh, people follow Jesus and proclaim his name. You think going back through time to different decades and eras and ways of being the church. Imagine what a diverse group that must be, yet they are all focused on one task, giving praise to God. What a beautiful picture of what our worship could look like. I'm struck too by the vision of the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. We get a little taste of the kingdom here on earth when we're gathered in church and we see acts of justice and mercy and grace and love. But to see the fulfillment of God, or at least a vision of it, sets my spine a-tingling. Where it says that there is no hurt or sorrow, uh, where all uh, you know, semblance of death and dying are past, and everyone is giving praise to God. I think, too, of that great cloud of witnesses that has our back and cheers us on. I love that image of there being so many voices in that heavenly choir uh, cheering us on that it's like a moving cloud, right? Sometimes when I feel isolated or I feel like no one understands, I think of the cloud of witnesses and what they've experienced and how they know me and are cheering me on. I want to lift up on this All Saints Day. Uh, an example, or give us some space uh, to think about those 
who are cheering us on. I want to show you a little clip. Uh, I have to apologize because I mentioned Mr. Rogers last week as well, but there's so much in his story that that strikes me. Uh, this came across my Facebook feed the other day. Uh, it is Mr. Rogers accepting a Lifetime Achievement Award, which he was honored with in 1997 uh, from the Emmys. And in this, uh, in this clip, uh, we see his response. And normally when you're getting praised and stuff, uh, all the attention is on you. Um, but I love how in this uh, moment, Mr. Rogers uh, opens up space for us to praise others. I could tell you all about it, but I'm gonna show you instead. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, we won't get in trouble for copyright or something like that. But here, check out uh, Mr. Rogers accepting his Lifetime Achievement Award. Ladies and gentlemen, the best neighbor any of us has ever had, Fred Rogers. For giving generation upon generation of children confidence in themselves, for being their friend, for telling them again and again and again that they are special and that they have worth. It is my honor on behalf of everyone here and on behalf of the millions of children whose mornings you have brightened with your kindness to present you with this Lifetime Achievement Award. It's a beautiful night in this neighborhood. Uh, uh, so many people have helped me to come to this night. Some of you are here. Some are far away. Some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take, along with me, 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are. Those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. 10 seconds of silence. I'll watch the time. whomever you've been thinking about, how pleased they must be to know the difference you feel they've made. You know, they're the kind of people television does well to offer our world. Special thanks to my family and friends and to my coworkers in public broadcasting, family communications, and this academy for encouraging me allowing me all these years to be your neighbor. May God be with you. Thank you very much. Wow. Take a few seconds to think about who has loved you into being. And maybe while you're doing that, take a few more seconds to think about the folks who have paved the way for us whom you might not even know. And layered onto that, maybe think about the future generations to come who will be joining us at that table of God's blessing as well, who look up to you and who you love into being too. Let's take a few seconds uh, right now to think of those folks and those faces.
how pleased they must be to know that you feel that way about them. I know for me, when I think of the saints who have paved the way for me or who have loved me into being, I think of folks at the churches I've belonged to. I remember as a little kid, I grew up at Berry Hill United Church, and there was this, this couple that sat in the pew in front of us. And I can't remember their names, uh, but I can remember their faces. And I remember how they turned around and welcomed me and talked to me as a little kid, just as I was worthy of, pray, of you know, welcome and uh, dignity and respect. I remember that couple. I remember past ministers uh, who have led me in uh, confirmation classes or whose words I have uh, been challenged by. I think of Sunday school teachers uh, who have made popcorn for me uh, and supported my peers. I think of camp counselors and campus ministers and neighbors and friends, people who have uh, shared life with me. I wonder who you thought of in that time. Who has loved you into being? Who has paved the way for you? And who is coming after you? Who you want to love into being as well? On this All Saints Day, I encourage you, if those faces are living and you can track them down on Facebook or whatever, uh, take a second to tell them. And if those folks have uh, left this world and gone to heaven, say a prayer of thanks. How pleased God is that you think of them this way. May we go and do likewise to love others into being. Amen. Friends, being All Saints Day today, we're going to gather around the Lord's table for a celebration of communion. And in doing so, uh, we're obviously thinking and remembering the life and ministry and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but we also think about all those saints uh, who have gone before us 
uh, and gathered at the Lord's table uh, and found their sustenance and hope there. And uh, we imagine that we're gathering around that same table uh, as people have been doing faithfully for centuries upon centuries. Um, I'm here in my kitchen, um, and you might be in whatever space is uh, convenient for you. Uh, I'm going to invite you to grab a, a, lo a piece of bread or a cracker or something you can use um, to, to be your bread um, for the elements today. I invite you to pour a, a little uh, splash of juice or wine or whatever you have on hand uh, that can be uh, used uh, when, when we partake of that at the time uh, as well. Uh, doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, whatever you have uh, handy is good. We're reminded that uh, at the Lord's table, Christ transforms uh, ordinary things like bread and juice uh, to be something holy and significant and important. So uh, lots of things to think about as we gather at the Lord's table today. Uh, friends, uh, let us come and taste the goodness of the Lord. God is with us. We are not alone. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give the Lord our thanks and praise. O holy mystery, that is holy love, you are beyond complete knowledge. You're above perfect description. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, source of life, living word, and bond of love, you are creative and self-giving and generously moving. In all the near and distant corners of the universe, nothing exists that does not find its source in you. Even when we turn away from you, you are with us. Your presence never fails us. Your gifts of hope and new life transform us. We praise you for Jesus Christ, eternal as your love, our bond to one another. We rejoice with all your people of every time and place, and with angels and archangels, we proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy are you. Holy and blessed are you. It is Jesus, God incarnate, the risen Christ who joins us together as a community of broken but hopeful believers. Loving what he loved, living what he taught, and striving to be his faithful servants in our time and place. In this meal, we remember Jesus, his promises, and the price he paid for who he was, for what he said, and for what he did. On the night before Jesus died, he took a loaf of bread, he gave thanks for it, and broke it and said, take and eat. Whenever you do this, remember me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup and poured it out saying, this is the new covenant. Remember me. And we do remember. We remember his life of love, his friendship, his teaching, his dying and rising to life again. In sharing this meal, we live out the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, that Christ is risen, that Christ will come to us again. O Holy Spirit, God of Spirit, we call on you to transform these familiar things as you continually transform the world around us. Bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower. So that in the sharing of these simple elements in this community, we may taste and see your goodness. So that we might catch a glimpse of what it is to be in communion with you and with one another. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. 
Friends, the body of Christ, the bread of life, broken for you. The lifeblood of Christ, the cup of blessing poured out for you and all creation. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. So thanks be to God. Friends, the table is set. All is ready. There is a spot for you here in God's love. I'm going to invite you to, when you're ready, uh, eat the bread and drink the wine. Amen. Friends, let us pray. We thank you, O Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God has laid on our hearts. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed to forgive as we have been forgiven, and to love as we have been loved. We give you thanks, O God. Amen. In Christ we have obtained an inheritance, that being everlasting life. And as an act of praise and thanksgiving, let us respond to that inheritance by sharing our gifts and being the generous body of Christ. There are so many ways that people are making their offerings these days, maybe through uh, PAR or Canada Helps or supporting businesses that are vulnerable these days. Uh, invite you to think and give a creative reflection to the ways that you are called to serve. Uh, and to offer your gifts for the building of God's kingdom. Amen.
We're going to enter into a little time of prayer. As part of that prayer today, I'm going to offer up a little litany, a little litany um, reminding us and acknowledging the saints in our traditions uh, and giving some thought to those who have gone before. I'm going to do that and then I'll leave some space for some silence. I invite you to make your own personal prayers in that time. And we'll end by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. This day, O Lord, we celebrate your saints, those who have tried to live in your ways by gently and firmly turning the world around, even upside down to make it a better place for all your children. Thank you for your saints, O oh God, and help us to be like them. There are saints who have famous names, like St. Mary Magdalene, or St. Peter, or St. James, or St. Joanna, or St. Mark, and many others. Thank you for your saints, O oh God. Help us to be like them. There are saints whose names we do not know, unnamed caregivers, forgotten single parents, landless plantation workers, amnesty letter writers, God's volunteers, and humble church workers. Thank you for your saints, O oh God. Help us to be like them. There are those throughout history who have given their all for what they believed. People like Julian of Norwich, or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther King Jr., Teresa of Calcutta, Florence Nightingale. Thank you for your saints, O oh God. Help us to be like them. And there are those who are living among us, who work tirelessly for justice and peace, for freedom and human rights, who bring laughter and a human touch, healing and wholeness, acceptance and understanding into a world with great need. Thank you for your saints, O oh God. Help us to be like them. As we walk this journey of faith, O oh Lord, as we strive to be your people, your saints in this world, we carry with us many things that weigh heavy on our hearts. And so into this time of silence, O oh Lord, we pray and articulate those things that we care about, that we love, that we hold deeply and lay before your feet. Hear our silent prayers, O God. And just as those first disciples learned from you and strove to be like you, so too do we, O oh Lord, seek to pray as you taught us. As we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to be the saints of God. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And may the God of Jesus Christ give you a spirit of wisdom that you might come to know the hope to which you have been called as the saints 
of God. Amen. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in the neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Would you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> <laughs>